pretty easy to learn. We will draw those pipes at the same time. We'll be putting a lot of people out of jobs. Are you comfortable with that? Um, Auto snaps to the nearest connection. Lovely. On its but if this app just did that, it would already be very, very, very valuable. <laughs> you guys have really come at the right time. Uh, genuinely, uh, we're gonna we're gonna sign up. Hi guys, producer Harrison here. In this video, Adam introduces us to H2X, a software company that is completely changing the heating industry as we know it. The guys at H2X have been kind enough to offer one of our subscribers one full year's free subscription to their software worth over £1,000. To find out how to enter, make sure you stick around to the end of the video. Hi guys, uh, welcome to Heat Geek. A uh, bit of a different one today. Uh, we're joined by Jordan and John from H2X who have um, something that's probably going to help a lot of us moving forward as we move into heat pumps uh, and I'm very excited about uh, so welcome, Jordan and John. Um, could you just give us a little rundown of, of what you're doing? Yeah, hello. My name's Jordan. I'm one of the co-founders here at H2X. Uh, we're really excited to show you our design software today. So we have uh, an advanced calculation tool for uh, heating, domestic water, and also gas and drainage designs. Uh, so we're just going to be running through a quick overview of the software and, and how it works. Yeah, and I'm John, one of the other co-founders of H2X, and um, yeah, I'll be showing you through the software shortly after Jordan's done a few slides. Yeah, so we're going to start with a couple of slides which just explain the concepts of the software and how the calculations work, and then yeah, John's going to jump in and do a design and show you through the results. Let's go for it. So we created this software to improve on traditional calculation methods. We thought we could improve the process um, by using intuitive software. In my next slide, I'm just going to run through the concept of that and how it all works. So you would create a project in the software, and then you set your calculation parameters. Uh, H2X will do the calculations based on your layout, and you just have to set all parameters beforehand. From there, you just mark up the system in the software. Um, and yeah, Jonathan, I'll show you how to do that soon. So. Because you're drawing to scale, H2X automatically quantifies everything as you draw in it. So it counts up um, all of your heat loads, uh, all the loading units on your domestic system, and it measures all of your pipe lengths as well. And it combines that information with your calculation parameters to automatically undertake calculations. So it will give you instant results, flow rates, pipe sizes, pressure drop, heat loss, velocity, and dead legs, and a lot more as well. Uh, we also then help with the quality control process. So we built in warnings. Um, so at any fixture, valve, or section pipe, if a design parameter is being exceeded, uh, H2X will flag that and it'll give you a big yellow box. It's pretty hard to miss. Once you finish your design, you're able to share a link to the model. So uh, you can get that reviewed by um, senior engineer, peer reviewer, or yeah, anyone you would like to share it with. And once you finish, you can export the bill at once. You can download a calculation report with all of your calculation results in Excel, and you can export into AutoCAD or Revit as well. So just to run through uh, the calculations, so for heating and heat loss calcs, it's a case of uh, setting your delta T, choosing your insulation type and thickness, setting your building properties, and then just drawing your layout and adding heat emitters. And h will yeah, size all your pipe work, give you flow rates uh, and pump duties from there. Um, for your domestic systems, you just yeah, choose the standard, as we said previously. Uh, you add fixtures, which have loading units based on the standard that you're using, and yeah, h 2 will work on the calculation and choose the flow rate. And you can change between standards and they and it will automatically update the calculations. For your pipe sizing, set your maximum velocity, choose your pipe material, uh, all the pipes come with diameters, and the yeah, H2X uh, will use the velocity and pipe diameter. Uh, well, to, to size, calculate the pipe diameter. And then pressure loss. So we'll do pressure loss through all the pipes based on the friction factor. Um, through any fittings based on the K value, through your valves, uh, 
based on manufacturer's guidelines, and then it will also be pressure loss for any changes in height on the pipe work. So that's the theory behind it. We're going to jump into the app now, and Jonathan's going to show you how it all works. Awesome. Um, it can be a good time for questions as well at this point. I know we've not seen much of the software, but uh, if there is anything on, on those slides, happy to answer. Um, just a quick one. So <clears throat> you had uh, one of the fields to insert there was insulation levels. Is that building fabric insulation you're asking for? Um, uh, it's on the pipe work. So it also works out the, your losses of heat from the pipe as well. That's that's really good. Okay. Um, uh, do you have MLC pipe work, uh, multi-layer composite pipe in the pipe work options? I saw copper. Uh, I think I saw um, stainless steel. Uh, it pecks our pecks. It's sometimes known as. How yeah, many we've got um, and just to show how dynamic the software is, you can see uh, at this point we've got forty-two mil pipes uh, and a and a pump duty around one point two two liters per second. And once we modify this uh, in a, shortly, well, we'll see all that update to uh, to match the new layout, uh, which I'll do now. So as we move into the common workspace, this is where you do all the design. And uh, before I do that, I'll just run through some of the key settings that Jordan mentioned in his slides. So there's a lot of information here. It doesn't make sense to go through it right now. Um, so I'll just point out, here's where you can create all your heat, in, heat emitters. So we've got quite a lot that comes standard. You can create literally anything that you want. Uh, there's enough for your radiator or underfloor. Uh, you can add any pressure loss, any kilowatt rating. In the flow systems, all you for each different system, You've got all the parameters here. So this is where you set um, like the temperatures, even the colors and the name. Uh, but more importantly, uh, this is what you're choosing, the insulation thickness. These are the different pipe materials uh, that we have available. Um, you can also set velocities uh, in this part as well. Choose a minimum pipe size if you wanted to. And if you wanted to add, like our software is 100% accurate. We don't build in any fat. So if you, if you wanted to add more than 5% or 10%, Feel free right. to, uh, that's uh, really good to know that there's such an issue in our industry of so much everyone leaving spare capacity and then obviously that compounds over the by the end so that's um good to know <laughs> yeah i think when it goes from the designer for a few design phases to the contractor it just kind of builds up isn't it yeah um, especially with heat pumps you know and with uh, with heat loss as well so you know as you know heat putting in a heat pump that's too big is detrimental to efficiency so uh, it's important to know where we're where we're leaving capacity. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, fully in control. And uh, the last thing I'll just mention more on the, uh, the plumbing side of things, but you can choose the peak flow rate calculation method here. And we've got the SIPI, BS806, and BS858 as well. And if you did choose SIPI, you can change the loading unit variance as well to see you building. Great. Yeah, you're fully in control of all the calculations. Um, well, we do the calculations for our control of the inputs and things. All right, so getting into the design. So we'll uh, we'll bring these pipes across and we'll add a few more heat emitters down the bottom here as well. So um, everything you need to design is in this toolbar. So it's a very simple user interface, very easy to learn. Also, this pretty cool feature called multi-pipes, whereas if you select this and highlight certain pipes, like you can see here with the two or just one, Whenever you select, it will draw those pipes at the same time. So it's very useful for uh, drawing a layout, which is a heating system where the pipes do follow the same uh, the same route through the building. Yeah. Drawing your pipes very simple. We put a lot of people out of jobs. Are you comfortable with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, people do mention that, but we just say uh, it's for about engineering. Time yeah, it's just about time the heating industry came into the 21st century. Where this is over, it's it's sad we're still paying people, uh, you know, to do this the long-handed way. It just it exemplifies where the industry is. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, I think this this isn't going to take anybody's job. It's just going to make it faster and easier. Yeah, I think uh, I know. Like personally, and people that we spoke to, like when you go to uh, when you study and you learn engineering, you expect to be uh, doing design work. And, solving problems, not measuring pipes, uh, putting numbers into a spreadsheet. So we, uh, the people that use it, they're very happy that they get the time. Spend more time like assessing the project, looking, yeah, is a heat pump better on this one than going with your traditional boiler? 
um, yeah. provide it a bit more value. Sure. Yeah. But yeah. Drawing pipes definitely made a lot easier with the software. And then um, when it comes to adding the heating elements, pick whatever you want. I'll do a mix here, so I'll just uh, I'll just pick some some of that. Nice. One. So we just say we want some two and a half kilowatt radiators. Around. Auto snaps to the nearest connection. Lovely. Exactly. Yeah. So it, so it saves you having to draw those pipes as well, and uh, it comes standard with a lock shield valve and a TRV as well. Um, so you don't need to have that on. So, yeah. um, can we uh, just just throwing out um, you know a challenge or whatever? Um, can we change the KV value of those lock shield valves, for example? So, if we had specific large bore lock shield valves or something, can we go and edit, or is it like a standard lock shield valve that you've put in there? Uh, it's a standard lock shield valve. And it's as simple as that. Like you can then come around and choose some valves that you might want to put on the system. Which will you can just drop on the pipes like this. Uh, that obviously contributes to pressure loss. So if you if you want a really accurate um, circulation pump duty, yeah. Um, but that is as simple as it gets. You draw your pipes, you add your heat meters, and the real magic at this point is when you click results. Combining that layout with all your parameters and settings is when it will. Uh, is doing the thinking now. It is a lot faster when you're not sharing the screen. Um, but just like that, no need to measure by these companies are, uh, everything is sized for you. So we can see before. It's already um, sized this pipe work. And, and uh, in this example, have you sized the pipe work on pressure loss or velocity or what have you? Uh, sized on velocity in this example, yeah. So, so as we've had in, sorry. Ah, uh, but you, you said, I think the, the velocity was set to 2.4 or something at the beginning, um, rather than 0.9. But could, so if we went and changed the velocity now to 0.9, would it auto recalculate all the pipes? It would, and we can show you that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, let's have a look. We can, we can see the flow rates, uh, 2.54, yep. 67 mil, and that is, uh, gone to, and it was 1.22 before, so we've almost doubled the, uh, the, the same on GT. There's a whole lot of results we provide. We don't know. Oh, wow. For example, if you want to then see the velocity, this pipe oh, is it set to, it must be set to nine, so velocity of 0.7. Great. It changes. Well, let's have a look. We can, just for demonstration purposes, we can. Yeah. Let's see. So let's say if we come to the settings, all systems, heating, and it's, it's set to one at the moment, but let's just for okay, demonstration. Yeah, that, that's, that's pretty standard. People normally round up to one. Uh, but if we just go to 0 0.5, just for example purpose, it will all uh, recalculate. We come back in here now. Let's push the pipe up from uh, 67 to 108. Yeah. The pressure drop has uh, gone less because uh, there's less friction. Well, it, does it even go down to the detail that the um, the the pipe work um, heat losses will be lower because of the you know the more turbulent. Uh, 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 stable flow will it will it recalculate the the heat loss from the pipe work it will recalculate the, the heat loss yeah so if there's a the bigger wow. the pipe yeah the bigger the pipe the uh, the more, more laminar the flow be. yeah yeah that's a mate that's fully living and breathing in every dynamic basically yeah it's live so it's really good for like if you've got a junior person doing the design yeah they might do 90 percent of it you come in and don't like a couple of things, you change it, and um, it's not like you have to start again or really yeah. go through. Um, At home, you can just. Uh, what, I, I, what I like about that is, as for the junior part as well, you can see what effect the variables have uh, and see how it dynamically changes the system, obviously, because that's where you learn to get over problems, isn't it? You know? Um, yeah. It's a good then, tool. Yeah, definitely. And um, it's also good for learning in the sense that um, you can. Say we want to turn on here the pressure drop from every pipe because uh, it's set to bar, it runs down. If it was at KPA, I might just do it now. So, uh, uh, the, the, the sort of more old school plumbers, uh, typically in, um, in more in domestic, would be used to meters head. I, I assume that's a, um, an option, is it? Uh, we have like six meter head. I haven't put it in. 
We've got KBA like, and VAR and PSI. Uh, they're, they're pretty easy to, uh, they're relative to each other. It's just because we buy, uh, and uh, most heat pumps come with a six metre head pump. So we know what our limit is once we know the um, residual pump head available from the unit. And the manufacturers actually stipulate their residual pressure in uh, metres head as well. But it's, it's, it's an easy calculation, but it might be worth dropping that in there also. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll, uh, again, if that's what people are looking for, it's uh, pretty simple to add. Um, and then, yeah, I just wanted to show here, I think because we've got such a low velocity, it's, it's rounding down to zero. But if you follow this through, yeah, yeah. Means pressure drop through the pipes, the fittings, uh, and all the valves as well. So people can really start to get a feel for, uh, for the pressure drop through the system as well and start learning how it all goes together, uh, which is really useful. And... Um, yeah, the plan is now just to move into the domestic stuff and show you some of the uh, like domestic water pipe sizing as well and looking at the results for that. And then um, we've got some pretty cool exports where you can export schedule of all the pipes and the valves and the fittings, um, which we'll show you at the end. Great. All right. Well, um, it is more of the same. So if we come across into the pressure now, I had it turned off. So it wasn't getting too, uh, too cluttered on the screen. Um, so this, again, we've already designed most of this building because you get the, probably the idea of drawing pipes and adding valves. Um, but as an overview, we've got the hot and cold water, the red and blue, the yellow is the gas. Uh, we've got some rainwater in here as well from the flow rate. Um, and what we're going to show you is adding some fixtures and how that affects the flow rate. And then uh, we've got some pretty cool features. We'll, uh, we'll add a new level and, and draw out a level in probably less than a minute. Um, we can look at the results. Um, so has this got the, uh, obviously this is a 2D plan, has this got the vertical drops included in the calc? And is it just assumed that the rad tails are like 150 off the floor or whatever? Yeah, so it, it is displayed in 2D. We've done that for like simplicity purposes, but um, it yeah. fully thinks So if we click on this pipe, for example, it's going to hide above the floor. And um, if we just zoom in now, you can change the height as you draw it, or as we've gone back now, we change that height. We can see those two little semicircles there. Yeah. That indicate that there's a that's a drop in meters. Yeah. So uh, and we do that for all it's for all the pressure calculations, obviously the heat loss as well. Like if that's now got an extra one meter drop, it's a uh, heat yeah. loss. And then we do export to Revit as well at the end, which I don't know everyone uses, but for people that do use Revit, it generates a full 3D model based on the layout. So all those heights are very important. Uh, and adding the valves are important as well because it saves you how to add them in Revit, which is really useful. Um, the, um, so I know we're on hot and cold water now, but uh, it, 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 if we're ever running pipes external, so I'm just going back to heat pumps in my head, um, can we change the delta T between, or can we set the outside temperature basically? So the delta T between the uh, pipe temperature and the outside temperature for, to work out temperature loss outside of the fabric of the building, just because that's one of the main sort of contenders we have. How are we going to get the heat from the heat pump into the building uh, efficiently without, you know, losing that? Yeah, that isn't an option at the moment. What people have been doing is like finding an average. So if it's, um, if there's only like 10% of the pipes outside the building, just factor yeah. that into the average. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, people aren't doing any calculation at the moment, really. So, you know, this is already going to be yeah. beyond what they're, uh, where they are. So, you know, it wasn't a criticism, but it's something perhaps worth thinking about uh, if, if it leaves the fabric, assume, I don't know, you know, whatever yeah. temperature. Yeah. Really good point. Mm -hmm. Something to look to add. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. These are all simple things for us to add. It's just a matter of uh, prioritising them. Yeah, no, uh, I know what it's like, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, question. Um, all right, well, I'll, uh, I'll carry on with this. So if we look at uh, what I'm going to do is add some fixtures and connect it up um, right here. So in the fixture drop-down menu, uh, we've got a lot of different fixtures to choose from. So we'll, uh, we'll go to the kitchen sink with hot water. And uh, you can just rotate that with that arrows on the keyboard. Uh, it's really simple. Uh, we'll put two in here. And similar to what Jordan showed in, in the slides earlier, uh, all these fixtures have, uh, we come here under, under hot water, it's got the amount of loading units uh, and also the minimum maximum pressures. And then when this pipe connects to the fixtures, it looks up the loading units, converts to a flow rate based on uh, 
Cepheid or whatever you've chosen. Yeah. You can also override the loading unit variant. So if you've if you generally are low use building, but you want to put some mediums in there, you can override uh, fixtures individually as well. And uh, connecting things up is really straightforward. So you can like highlight multiple objects with the yeah. here. Click auto connect, and it'll just run those pipes as efficiently as it uh, as possible to uh, make the connections. Uh, and, and, and again, have you got? Uh, so if we click on KS kitchen sink or whatever, um, is is that got height off the floor or whatever? So it knows the drop. Um, yeah, high above floor, great. I, I, I'm trying to find things to catch you out, but you've you've really like yeah. You've, I mean, I suppose it's quite an easy <laughs> thing to to do, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean. Uh, we, we've been engineers doing the process as was because we like to think we thought of most things and then uh, yeah, yeah. we have been around for a couple of years so we, we take feedback really seriously similar to what you've been saying today so if we did miss something like that um, so that we've had the past two years and yeah, sure. it in, so, uh, well actually I mean one of my questions is how many units have you got at the moment? Um, I think there's a brown Four to five hundred, probably split across like seventy oh, wow. companies. Yeah, is that um, internationally or? Yeah, yeah, it is work. So we're uh, we we actually started this in Australia. Uh, so right. we've got... okay, this is, we'll we'll save this bit for later. Um, yeah, we'll come on to that. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll be just talking through all the history and everything. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, well, I think uh, I'd like to know a bit more, more about you guys for sure, but uh, just to keep things, um, you know, together. All right. Yeah. Well, the last thing I'm going to share on this is we're going to add a new level, uh, ex- put some risers into level below, do a quick layout, and then uh, look at the results, and then uh, yep. one export, and we'll be done. So I'll get on with it. So um, in the floor plan view is where you set up the project. So um, we've already done it here for the ground floor, but if we want to add level one now, you can click plus level above. It will create this new blank workspace. And then you can upload a floor plan. You can actually change the arrows on the keyboard. To, um, if I want to bring that pipe down, right. 2.5. If I use the down arrows on the keyboard, if you keep an eye on the height. And the bottom yeah, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can really, like, you, you, you're looking at keyboard shortcuts to get through, like, yeah smash through the design as quickly as possible basically yeah exactly and like if we want to draw a pipe i've not really been doing it but you can press the pipe um uh, tape a valve uh half a riser yeah so if you want to add a riser now you don't have to do this you can click r drop that on there so it gets a uh, gets really fast once you get to know it if you want to change yeah. the cold it up, i get it yeah page. All right, yeah, so if I then go to level one, you'll see these are the come up in the right place. Just like you can uh, show your whole layout. It saves a lot of time. Yeah. Just use some shortcuts to connect that up as well. Um, and it, it, it maintains the uh, the distance that you previously had them set apart, I assume. So whatever you set them apart, it would maintain when you're drawing those. So yeah, the, the pipes match or maintain the distance, but you can override it individually as well. So if you did want to make this one a little bit further apart, you, you can do that. Uh, if you wanted to change the height of this one pipe, you can do that as well. So yeah. uh, it, it comes default like that, but then it is fully uh, customizable. And then an alternative to drawing, uh, drawing or adding the fixtures and connecting them together is using the nodes here. Um, so I'll just show, instead of adding four bases of shower and three WCs, I can come to the node drop-down menu, create a new fixture group, which I'll um, put some, some information here, like the name and what pressures I wouldn't want to exceed. Yep. And then uh, four basins, um, three WCs and one shower. Quick create. And now this is a node that I can find in the drop-down menu. Got you. And stamp it. Yeah. And this is this has all the loading units of all those fixtures combined. It just saves you having to add every individual fixture connected up. Uh, yep. and up the branch pipes. And so it's just a much much quicker way to do yeah. it. 
Awesome. It's really, really good. So we've got the PGs out here where we've made the, the node previously. It works really well when you've got a lot of the, uh, a lot of the same kind of node. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's great for like hotels or apartment buildings where everything's the same. Yes. And you want to size like your risers and your main sort of yeah. distribution pipe work. You can just go around and have your apartment nodes or hotel room nodes. Yeah, hotel rooms are a very good example. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And um, what's actually good, say if this was a hotel or any building that has a lot of uh, similar yeah. ones. If we come back here and uh, maybe we have a few more floors exactly the same as this, we can, um, we can have those two extra levels so we're going to workspaces and then do a copy and paste. So do control C from this. So it will paste the exact same PDF of all the pipe layouts, the new heights, and just in a matter of seconds, you've, uh, you've grown the building, those extra couple of levels. Yeah. And once again, you can if there's a slight difference on level three, you can yeah. you know, play it to suit. Wow. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's all the drawing part. When you click results, it's very similar to what we saw with heating, when pipes are size, you've got the pressures, uh, velocities, or your heat loss in the domestic system. And um, something that we've actually got here is those warnings that uh, we mentioned before. You can see we've got quite a few here as well. So these big yellow boxes are telling us that we've got too much pressure on the levels. So it's set to a maximum 500 kPa, which yeah. you can change to. Yeah. Uh, and the software is telling us, you can click on this I here and say that the maximum inlet's been exceeded. It gives you a few ways to solve it. Yeah. Um, to show you the diet, how dynamic the software is, if we want to choose a pressure reduction valve, uh, I'll just put it here on the system. And uh, it's like 490, so it's Click results again. All those warnings will have gone away. So it really helps with that review process and um, helps you to learn as well. You can start to realize how controlling the pressure in different parts of the system. So you can see now those warnings have gone away uh, on every level. And um, probably don't need to spend too much time on this, but there's a whole load of results down the right hand side here. So you can see similarly, you've got your circulation pump duty again, uh, that you heat loss flow rate and pressure drop. Uh, all the pipes are sized, all the gas based on the uh, index length calculations. So we've got a 50 mil gas pipe going to 240 mils to the two. Uh, yes. So, I mean, that's one of my questions. And as we're talking about it, I've noted the yellow gas pipe, uh, as we mentioned gas. This will do gas pipe sizing for you um, based on whatever pressure drop you want uh, between uh, the meter and the uh, the point of use, right? Yeah, exactly. That that so, is um, on its but If you, this app just did that, it would already be very, very, very valuable. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. No, definitely yeah. agree. I mean, we had to do a pressure loss of a very old gas system that's been extended, extended uh, uh, last week, actually. I mean, you know, it's all done by hand. It took us a very long time. With the spreadsheets and stuff around, but it looks like, can we use this on a, an iPad? Um, usually not now. You, you, you can have your laptop out on site and you could literally draw it as you walked it, measured out and put it in the system and it would give you your pressure losses. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, would, would, do, could we, uh, so do we put our, say, let's say we've got a, a hundred kilowatt um, appliance. Will it work out? Can we put in the calorific value, et cetera? And will it work out the um, meters cubes required, the flow rate required, uh, and then the pressure loss off that? Or would we have to put in the pressure loss for each leg of pipe work? Um, yes. Yeah, so the way it works is you set, start and the end. So you type in all the different appliances. So we've, We've put it to the new pump for the demonstration purposes and put a load on it. So you put in the two hot water plants. We've put in a flow rate. And we've added a stove here, which is really just a, a node. You can call that anything. Yeah. Um, so you give it a name. It's got a height above the floor as well because it takes into account vertical pipes in the, in the calculation. Um, so you add your flow rate. It's Okay, so you'd work out your flow rate to that um, that appliance. Okay, right, got you. Yeah. 
And then you can add diversity. So if you've got a kitchen with 10 different stoves, you can put them all at 80. Uh, and then you've got the inlet pressure, which is uh, 72. And then from, so it really the calculation works. It, it looks at the regulator here, where you've got, uh, got your pressure. Um, then looks at the index length calculation, looks at the flow rate, and then we'll size it for you. I wish we had this last week. You would have saved, <laughs> oh, you would have saved it three days. So you would have put someone on the job in that case. <laughs> yeah. oh, well. Or you could just do more work, take more jobs on. Yes. Take more money. Um, but again, um, won't go unless you want me to, but uh, very dynamic for us. If you come in and say, you want to put 500 megajoules in and different pressure, click results and we'll update instantly again. Amazing. Um, yeah. Um, and then for the hot and cold water, it's more of the same. And one of the differences here is we've got the fixtures. So once it uh, happens, I'll just show you very quickly. You get the and then scroll down here to uh, fixtures. And not only did you get the residual static pressure, which you turn back off, you also get the dead leg volumes as well. So all the literage and distance between like, the circulation to the to the fixtures, uh, all that information is given to you. There's a lot of clients say they don't want more than one liter or ten meters, whatever it is, between all the anyways, the cold water that comes out. Um, so you can get all that information as well and share that with the, with the yeah. client if you want. Um, all right, and. That's all I plan to show. So I'll move on to the export, just show you one last thing, and then uh, yeah, we can we can take questions and look at other things. So um, awesome. there's quite a few different exports. Right. Just to talk through them, I won't show them all, but you can share a read-only link. So if I wanted to share this with, you, say, you're my manager and you wanted to review it, I could share this link with you. Um, like if I was sending you a PDF, I couldn't fit all the dead legs, velocity, depressions, heat loss on it. If I share the link, you can access it with no license required. And you can turn on and off what you want to see. You can look at my settings and you know, like them, let me know when I can change them. Separate the layers. Yeah. Right. So cool. uh, you can download a PDF, pretty uh, standard stuff. Comes with a title block and cover sheet. You can download a bill of materials, so every pipe length, size, valve, fitting, um, like radiator. Is, a, is all provided on a level by level basis, and you can put in your own cost there as much you want to. All right, quick question on the radiator. So let's say we select a three kilowatt radiator. Um, how does it know? If it, do you put in a, um, a like a delta T for the radiator, i.e., what it's three kilowatts at? Because there's a stance so of the standard for radiators. I, I don't know what you're kind of. Uh, understanding is, but the standard for radiators is a delta T50, so it sits at 50 degrees above the air temperature to give you three kilowatts. Obviously, for heat pumps, we want that more like 20. So, is there a way to adjust that in here and it would adjust the radiator size, or would we have to do that link ourselves in the app? Or, um, or would it would it give you a radiator and just state the kilowatts that it needs of that radiator rather than the size? Yeah, it gives the. It doesn't necessarily give the size. It gives the yeah, the kilowatt radius. That answers it. That answers it. Yeah, perfect. And you can yeah. you control the density, so yeah, whatever yeah. you want. Yeah, you just need the conversion factor of that, so that's fine. Which will be different for every building, so that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I'll, I'll show you the design reports. It's quite interesting. And then before I do that, we export to AutoCAD. So if you want to make a modification in CAD and put it on your own layers and whatever you, you can do that and uh, Revit's also pretty powerful for more for bigger engineering companies that uh, just from doing this layout it'll generate the 3D model with all your pipe sizes, materials, valves. Uh, um, but I'll just show you this design report quickly. Interest, it's a bit more technical. So you can download the design report. Uh, it comes with a PDF of all the references which uh, I won't show now because it's getting pretty basic. Yeah, it just labels every component in the system on like a, like a, a drawing and it will have a little reference to everything. And those references then correspond to uh, yeah, all the information within this report. I don't know if I can copy it on, uh, on this computer, but I can still have a look at it. 
So yeah, exactly like Jordan said, you get the reference which you can correlate to the PDF. And then for example, looking at the pipe here, so it's level by level and system by system. So for cold water, you've got your loading units, continuous flows, everything you can see, diameters, materials, pressure drops, uh, and you have the heat loss as well, some of the hot water pipes. So it's a really good tool for, for checking the design. And um, summary of the different plants you have, uh, all the valves as well, sizes, KV values, pressure drops, fittings. Um, and uh, for if you want to get your worst case of maximum pressures uh, and also the dead leg volume and lengths. So it's a good, you can do a design and be very confident at the end of it. You've done all your calculations. Yeah. If you get an RFIs or anything, just refer back to it. Really good for like all your QA records as well to have that. Yeah, definitely. And then um, this report also gets downloaded as well. So will come with all your SH trucks in our account, but it will all be uh, your project information that you would have filled in. And, uh, it just gives a summary of the design. Yeah, um, nice. The design, what the calculations have used, and um, all your design parameters as well. So it just takes all the information off the software. Can we, uh, this might not be developed yet, it would be good to be able to white label that bit. Sorry. To white label it, so um, so we you use if we're the uh, design engineers, we would have our it be branded with our our brand. People normally pay extra for a white labeled version. Right. Yeah, well, it is in word format, so you can literally do anything you want to it. Oh, okay. Or other yeah. people, other people charge extra for that, so it's a tip for you guys. We'll get that. <laughs> But yeah, like if you wanted, so we just all could fill it up. Yeah. So oh, so this is, this is, oh, this is an editor. Oh, yeah, because we're in Word, aren't we? Yeah. 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 Being pulled into Word and it's editable. So we can literally chuck our own footer and um, uh, header above it, et cetera. Amazing. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, massive return on investment. Yeah. Very um, good. Yeah, we could keep going forever, but I think, uh, I think you get the gist. Yeah, no, that gives an overall. Yeah, yeah, obviously, we've got to look at time as well. People, you know, might, might stop dropping off. Um, that Well, first of all, well done. That is amazing. Uh, it's a very, very good bit of software. Um, who, who did the software side? Was it either of you two, or have you got a, someone else to do that bit? Or No, we have a very good team of uh, skilled developers who do that. We're, uh, we're not coders. Yeah, no, because it's incredibly seamless um, uh, uh, and well put together. So I'd be surprised if it was just you two. <laughs> With yeah, yeah, no, we've got a <laughs> we've got a full team here. We're like customer facing. Um, I know that I come from the engineering background, but yeah, we've got a really good developers. Uh, Eugene's the main guy who's who's pretty much brought it all to life and made it all possible, which is really good. Um, and yeah, we we got the same way we're always marketing and trying to spread the word. He's constantly developing as well. So that's why like, all the things you mentioned today and all the other things we get mentioned, we'll uh, we're always adding them in. And uh, yeah, it's in our best interest for this to be perfectly suited to the industry. Probably, probably just to say, uh, you can see on the screen at the moment, uh, feel free to get in touch with me if you're interested to learn more about the software. My emails. Jordan at h2xengineering.com. We can do personalized demonstrations uh, to your company. We offer a 14-day free trial after the demonstration if you'd like to give it a go. Uh, licenses are just £89 a month, and uh, we'll give 20% off uh, to anyone who's seen this video. Um, you know, I would like to uh, reference Seeky in an email. So. Thank you for that. That's awesome. Uh, and then, um, uh, so support, like how does how does support work? you got like a chat box type thing or what's the how does that bit work uh, you may have seen it in the app but in the bottom right there is a help button integrated so you can yeah click on the help button that will uh, yeah and just say get help with the design or report an issue or whatever and then we can it will share a, the read only link to the project so we can have a look into the design and tell you like what the issue might be uh, so we'll give full support like during you know UK business hours uh, and we have people in different countries as well. So yeah, we can uh, yeah, give support 
uh, at any time of day, really. We're pretty hands on with it because it is our baby and we do want everyone to enjoy using it. So, yeah, like really, it you, you guys, uh, I said just before we start recording, you guys have really come at the right time. Um, you know, as the well, hopefully, world, not just UK, transitions to heat pumps. All of a sudden, what wasn't important, uh, and more so in domestic, obviously this is definitely good for commercial, uh, but in domestic, it didn't matter what you did. You, you had a gas boiler, you threw it in, it was oversized, pipe work was either over or undersized, and you got away with it. Uh, and a, a lot of people were getting a, quite a quick, rude awakening um, when it comes to heat pumps. So this is going to help a lot of people. This couldn't be timed any better. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, well done, you. Um, so, should we uh, just? I'll, I'll, I've got a few questions written here. Should we go back into like our normal chat? Uh, if you stop sharing, yeah. And uh, just a bit about, well, a bit about yourselves and a bit, a bit more about the software. We'll try and make it concise, though. So, how did how did you two meet? Um, well, it was mates from back in the day, really, who uh, opened it up in construction. So we've been mates from being about 17, 18, uh, but from the same uh, part of the world. So, yeah, I've just uh, yeah, been nice for a long time. But you started developing the app in Australia? Yeah. Wow. Yes. Whilst travelling, um, or what was the...? Yeah, Jonathan ended up over there first. Uh, so I think he spent about six, seven years over there. And uh, oh. I, I went, uh, yeah, with my partner like a few years after and now we uh yeah just uh, started catching up and Jonathan had this brilliant idea for an app uh, so yeah I offered to help out and get involved yeah I was pretty much in spreadsheets uh, say all day but a lot and uh as I was getting more senior in my job I was being more responsible and working longer hours and really just finding all the problems and yeah I thought it would exist, which I think most people you speak to in the industry, they, when you tell them about well, the industry as well, it's like, does that not exist? Um, and but I had the same thing, I looked for it, nothing existed. And spoke to other engineers in the industry, they said they did want to, uh, they, they would they would use the software if it was available. And then, yeah, it was just uh, a few of us got together. Jordan being in construction, like near the problem first time as well. Um, yeah, and then we really just built the team from there. and. We launched it and it was just like a cold water pipe sizing tool just to see if people liked it. And again, just that feedback from everyone. Why does it do heat loss? Why does it do dead legs? Why does it integrate with Revit? We just literally added to it. The, the more the, the industry backed us by like using the software, we just reinvested in, into the product. And so this seems quite new for us, but actually, wh when did you launch this? Because you launched it in Australia first, right? Yeah, January 2020 was the initial launch. So you see um, now heaving stuff. Yeah, it was a small group of customers uh, that worked with us to iron out some things. And then the first year was, was really just about validating it. And then uh, we went full time <clears throat> in January 2021. Uh, and that's when we really just started to reach out to everyone, mainly in Australia. And then towards the end of last year, like, uh, Jordan moved back to the UK and we started getting customers in the UK. We've got some in the Middle East, across Asia. Um, and um, became very, very apparent that heating was required. <laughs> it wasn't there. Not really that big of a deal in Australia. Um, yeah. Warming up there already. Yeah. Um, we've only recently launched it and been working on it for uh, the past few months. And uh, yeah, really excited to, to get it out. We've already got a few customers in the UK. And uh, yeah. Well, you should be excited. I think you've got something great here. You should be very excited. Um, okay, uh, this might be another uh, suggestion box one. Um, schematics. So um, do you do like an overall schematic type thing? As, but I know it's a bit more simple than what you've done there, but it's something that we have to draw up all the time. Is there the ability to draw a schematic in there? A main um, so, view. No. So, a system layout type thing, Not you know. Yeah, no, I was going to say not yet, but it's uh, it's one of the most commonly requested things, uh, and we have it scheduled to be done. So sort of, I think by the end of this year, probably it, in the next year. Probably annoying really to hear because you've done you've done the hard bit first, and so now it's like the really simple bit that people want in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a little tool there would be very helpful. Um, uh, so we want to make it all like fully interactive as well. Where you can click on everything and you know 
turn the results on and off like you can in the 2D yeah. view. So great. Be... Awesome. Underfloor heating design. Any, I mean, again, it's not really, um, it's not adding any com complexity, but it seems like if we could also put underfloor heating design in there, that would be a nice little, maybe it's a suggestion box one, um, but there's another one. <laughs> Another yeah, definitely. if you're bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to do. Uh, but no, I fully agree. Um, You've done the we, important one first. Uh, we just like to get something to the market that's useful and then add to it rather than wait in, say, another year. Correct. Yeah, no, you've done it the right way. And you've done the bit that's needed the most, I would say. Um, the, the biggest issue, you, your, your main value here for me uh, it is is it is heat pumps nationally. I mean, this is, its best use is commercial design, but the most value is in heat pumps uh, for several reasons. One, there's a lot more heat pumps being installed uh, and going to be installed everywhere. It's going to be mass scale, obviously. Uh, so there's a lot more individual projects. Uh, and B, that's where all the mistakes are happening with heat pumps. So they're getting lower scops because people don't know about pressure loss. So they're putting in low loss headers uh, unnecessarily, potentially, or, or if they are, they're not, you know, balancing it correctly. So, yeah, it's going to help people kind of understand that and have a bit more reassurance when they step into doing heat pumps. So, you know, rather than having uh, one engineer um, designing a uh, big commercial, you may have every single <laughs> domestic installer, which is obviously better for you guys because uh, you get to sell more licenses. But I, I do see a lot of value there. Um, didn't, uh, didn't touch on it, sorry, in the results, but we balanced the system as well. Um, so okay. you don't have to manually balance it on site. We work out which, like, uh, which which is the pressure. Um, so yeah, awesome. time. Well. that's all the questions. If you want to be in with a chance of winning a full year's free access to this incredible software from H2X, all you have to do is follow the link in the description below. Make sure you have subscribed to the channel, liked the video and engaged with us in the comments. If you're not the lucky winner of the giveaway, then fear not. H2X have also been kind enough to offer our viewers an amazing 20% off for anyone who references HeatGeek when signing up. Awesome. So one full year subscription to H2X for uh, yeah. one of the applicants. That's um, very generous of you. Thank you very much on behalf of the Heat Geeks. Anyone else watching? I'm definitely entering it because I definitely want this software. <laughs> um, I better win. <laughs> um, that's it for questions, guys. So um, I, like, yeah, I've, I, I booked you guys in thinking, OK, yeah, it's a design thing and you know, we get to draw out layouts and things like that. I did not expect what I was going to see. I'm really uh, very impressed and genuinely uh, we're going to we're going to sign up. So you guys are also, uh, are you at Installer Show next week as well? Yes, we'll, we'll be at the Installer Show in Birmingham. So if uh, okay. yeah, anyone who's seen this video wants to come uh, visit us, we're going to have a uh, laptop set up so you can actually try out the software for yourself uh, at the show. And um, if you mention Geek, uh, yeah, you'll be eligible for 20% off any sign-ups. Amazing. So they've got you've got the the year subscription potentially. Make sure you enter that to win, and uh, make sure you see them in uh, installer next week because uh, then you'll still get twenty percent off anyway. Guys, thanks very much. Yes, thank you, Adam. Okay.